Yep, works. Um, uh, this time I checked how to connect this, so it should work better. Um, okay, um, we want to present Opencast Studio. We already uh, tried to raise awareness for this project uh, for quite a while. Um, the idea is roughly record your videos anywhere, and um, it's based on the idea from uh, Duncan from UCT, but I would say that what you see now is totally refactored or uh, completely new code. Um, but yeah, nevertheless... Um, yeah, in a way, I always had to stop our developers to throw away anything and everything and reinvent it over and over and over again. So um, I will give a live demo, and you are all invited to do so on your own. So we are happy with feedback. Um, so the basic page is studioopencast.org at the moment, where uh, an installation is present. Um, I guess I can increase this a little bit. Um, you have these sec sessions uh, uh, settings. Um, uh, you are um, by default in this uh, develop server is in entered and you all probably know that whatever you upload there will be deleted at 3 or 4 in the night uh, so um, you can try it out and uh, yeah it will be you can done. use any other server though uh, if you use one of your own servers you uh, your your server need to provide a few http headers so the browser will accept that uh, it's in the documentation of the GitHub repository and in the About page, um, but otherwise you, you can actually use your own server for testing if you provide that. Okay. Um, if you start with a tool, you are asked to um, select if you want to record your display, record the display in camera or your camera. I guess most exciting is to record both. Um, after that, you have to make sure that you are um, giving access to the screen recording. You can do this by selecting the whole uh, uh, screen. You can, even if you have attached a second screen, decide which of these screens you will record. You can select an uh, application or even a Chrome tab. Uh, let's stick with the whole screen. Um, after you selected the video sources, you can select if you want to have a microphone or not. Um, as you see, you get even an indicator if your microphone is working. And um, that's it, roughly. So all you have to do now is um, to make sure that you press the record button. And uh, the recording is running. So. Um, not much more to do. I wait a few more seconds so that the video is not disappointing short if it enters Opencast afterwards, but uh, I guess 20 seconds will be enough. So if I switch here, for example, back to the presentation and um, would continue my presentation, that will for sure always also be recorded. Um, but now simply press stop. Uh, we get an upload dialog. I have to present a title. And the lecturer. I can download if I want the sources. So even the recording is done in a way offline. Also, you are in a browser. You don't need an internet connection while recording. So it's uh, the same technology that is used by... Um, the web conferencing, but we are using a media recorder API available in most browsers in Safari and iOS that has to be activated, but in the rest um, uh, it is available. Then um, we have uh, videos in the local storage of the browser that can be downloaded or, as I did already, can be uploaded automatically to Opencast. And we are gone now. And um, if I switch over to our server, develop server, we see the OC Summit recording that is now being processed with a fast workflow. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I don't have um, to show you the, how the video editor works and whatever that you could use afterwards on that. And um, 
usually in a few seconds uh, that will be there. I guess I use the meantime to continue with the presentation and hopefully show it afterwards to you. What um, you also could do uh, with Android phones or iOS devices, uh, especially we tried it with uh, iPads, uh, is to record a single stream, so only the camera will be available. Um, as you see, it looks very similar to what we had already. On iOS devices, you have to enable the Media Recorder API as it's still marked as experiment uh, from Apple. But we heard already that Apple has a few uh, additional uh, problems uh, with other technologies too. Um, so what do we want to do next is we integrate this in Opencast to make sure that also the studio opencast.org URL is quite fine for trying this out and getting feedback from you. Um, we um, guess integrated in your Opencast, we can import a lot of settings that have not be made to be made by the users. And with LTI support, we also would get a nice way to get the recording directly into your course without the lecturer providing any uh, feedback on uh, in which course do I want to have this now and so on. So. Um, yeah, um, uh, even with uh, Studio Opencast, uh, basically just providing the JavaScript stuff and so on to, to do the recording, and um, the whole recording happening in your device uh, and not in some other service we run or something like that. Um, even with this setup, uh, people already ask us, okay, can we run this on our own because uh, we want to run it on premise on our own infrastructure. Uh, we don't want to point lectures to some public service, even if what happens is actually happening in the browser. So uh, that was, was something people ask. And uh, the LTI integration, or really the open cost integration is already worked upon. And uh, one of our developers assured me that it's basically done, meaning that it will probably take months to come out. <laughs> uh, no, but what we'll see. Um, so I, I guess it's definitely coming very soon, um, which is nice. And yeah, as Rudiger pointed out, uh, we would certainly like to use it to integrate it into um, different LMS plugins, for example, so that you, from your LMS, just click a button and can record something and it will end up in your course. That would be really, really nice for lecturers, I think. Okay, uh, it is still better also. We could recommend it already for use from my point of view. So we spent several hours on uh, trying if it's more or less stable. So as I said, we you need to activate developer services in Safari and iOS, what we know. It does not work with Microsoft Edge, but Microsoft was so kind to replace this browser with uh, the, something they still call Chrome, uh, Edge, but it's Chrome. Um, yeah, so, so it actually works in Edge. It just doesn't work in Edge from December last year. It works in the new Edge, which got released somewhere. End of in, January. In, I guess. Oh, end of uh, February. I thought uh, uh, end of January was the date. Um, yeah. The, um, we will not do this, but we noticed already that iframes and LTI integration with the media recorder uh, does not work well. So Chrome and Safari don't like it. Firefox still likes it, but I guess they will rethink this because I can imagine an iframe in the background doing recording is nothing that people usually want to have. Um, we see an issue with the uh, storage time of videos in the browser cache. So. Um, we have not seen uh, something to make sure uh, that it's uh, lasting long enough. So garbage collection at some point uh, comes in that usually is long enough for you to record and upload. But if you close your PC after the presentation and come back two days later, that's untested and it's probably something where the timeout already happened. Um, we hope that even too long recordings that might, uh, on a worse connection, take long for uploading will not become a problem. But, uh, yeah. And yes. so we haven't actually seen an issue with that, but we've identified that this could be theoretically an issue. That's yeah. basically the current state. So. And uh, WebM files uh, that we create here 
are not liked by the schedule and upload workflow as the image operation fails on that because some duration issues are not set perfectly in the container. But again, a minor issue. So hopefully when I return to uh, the other, uh, it worked and as you see, it will be published without any problems. Um, yeah. And I guess 20 seconds will be enough. So if I switch here. So you see it works and uh, you're all invited to do your own recordings uh, here. And At the end of the day, I hope I'll see a lot of cat videos up there. We've got the cat and the recording tool and the test service. So, you yeah, take your iPhones or whatever and try to <laughs> record the cat. <laughs> and answers definitely means that we'll end up with a lot of uh, test material for our uh, demo service. So, any questions? So, who, who are you thinking on which CDS would? Uh, go the video when you record that. So I'm a teacher, then I record the video, I would love to open cast. That should belong to a CDS, or have you thoughts on that? Or? We actually have. So uh, as you noticed, you can't edit a series in a Studio Opencast Org. And that's simply for the reason that in theory we would need to provide the identifier of that series to actually identify it as an open call switch is, well, you don't want to do that as a user. Um, however, if, when you integrate that in, LM, in an LMS, you often have the context of, of a series already. And in that case, uh, we, uh, you will be able to provide this series uh, via basically an, an API, integration API, uh, to Studio. And if that happens, um, well, the recording will automatically end up in the series. So uh, we kind of thought of that uh, in, in some sense. Again, here you, you can't do that right now. Um, it would be easy enough to add, but again, you would need to provide an ID with, yeah. We want to keep the usability as simple as possible and guess that the context in which you provide the recorder will provide you the information on the series if the LTI stuff is completed. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, maybe another thing uh, for, for Studio Opencast Talk, if you use that, and then it will end up in, in the Opencast, you can, of course, uh, always set the series with an Opencast. Yeah, by the way, let me congratulate you. I think it, this is the next big feature in Opencast, so I'm, I'm waiting heavily for you to finish the work. Thanks. Here's your, here's your money for saying so. <laughs> Other questions? For the case, uh, if the, they want to wreck it only the screen, um, I can put the uh, audio source from the camera. Um, is this is possible. So, you yeah. used an older version, I guess, that it was an issue. That's yeah. why you now have this assistant in front where you first select the video source and then, and then select if you want to have audio and then it takes the audio source of the system. But in a later version, we for sure will have even a microphone selector there that at the moment we were not ready uh, to finish before the conference. Actually, it depends. So uh, if you're using Firefox right now, you will have a microphone selector. You will? Yes. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's actually... <laughs> never. It's interesting. It's interesting to see uh, how many issues you run into when using different browsers again. Uh, this brings me back 10 years when, when you were write a website and it worked in one browser and in the other it wouldn't. Um, so uh, for Chrome, you could build a custom uh, microphone selector and you would have to create a custom microphone selector. For Firefox, it will automatically ask you, so it has built in for, uh, device selector. Uh, and you can't build a custom one, so that's fun. And yeah, but if you're using Firefox right now, yeah, you can select that. Uh, by the way, if you're using Firefox, for example, on an Android device, again, it will ask you uh, if what camera you want to use and things like that. So uh, it 
unfortunately, it depends a little bit on the browser. Okay, um, so I just want to say thank you for working on this. As you probably know, that uh, we've been um, testing this because um, we're currently using Camtasia Relay to allow people to do sort of desktop uh, podcasts, and that's come end of life. And also, we're, we're you know we're living with it until it stops working, kind of thing. But they're now rolling out Windows 10 across campus. And we don't know how that's affecting uh, things, so um, we're, we're looking to move to this. Um, I haven't played with it myself until now. Uh, but the first thing I was going to say, can you put a delay button on the record button? Because you're going to, every video will just have you switching screens from the browser to, to your desktop or, or whatever otherwise. So, so if uh, I, yeah, like you have a report issue button there, but I can tell you that is already there. Ah. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, but know. we felt uh, for presentation here and telling you all to use it, uh, we had issues with... Um, how to get this started and um, compared to the older version that you might know uh, the selection of devices and setups is what we uh, focused on for at the moment and I hope that the countdown will not be a huge problem. Okay. Well, um, it's sold now. Okay, fine. You sold it to me now. <laughs> and we also uh, did a little bit of discussion if uh, a counter would be the best way to go or it's another option would be to, uh, at the end before you upload, present the user with a very, very simple uh, trim editor, basically saying, okay, this is the starting point, because <laughs> even if you have a countdown and switch to somewhere else, you actually don't necessarily know when, when it's actually going to start and things like that. Um, so again, this would be an option and you can just pass on the okay. metadata of, of start and end to, to OpenCal. So we'll still look into that, but yeah. If you're interested, definitely comment on the, the issues. 